I owe this pleasure? What, the early morning rise? Yeah. I don't know. I was uh, thinking about that song, Let's Get It Started. Hello? Wait, were you really? (laughs) Well, that's my dad's favorite song. (laughs) Is it? Well, it is. I said, Dad, the energy up at Wisconsin was amazing, man. The, the music, you know, they played your song. And he goes, oh, I like that song. Let's get it started. Uh. <laughs> he starts walking around the house singing that. <laughs> That's what it reminds him of, or, of Iron Man. So. Oh, man. Well, hey, well, everybody has their own. So if that's his, then I'm all for it. Well, you know, it's kind of unlikely for him. Uh, <laughs> Crushing Iron podcast number 94, take one. Man, 94. Yeah. That's insane. That's a lot of them. That's a lot of podcasts. So, but on a serious note, why are you up so early? Oh, man, I got, I'm on, you know, I'm within 30 days. I start. Oh, are you turn- starting the, uh, yeah, you're starting it. I got you. I start turning the needle a little bit. Uh, yep, the, as the, you should. Yeah, got to get it going. Uh, the plan, sort of was to go to the lake <laughs> this morning. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. You, you do? You yeah, do? Uh, well, we'll start with the podcast, not the lake. Yeah, there you go. Hey, but you know what? It'll get us. It'll get you motivated. It'll get you pumped up. And it'll get you ready for, uh, you know, the important stuff, which is, you know, getting in your open water swim. Right, which uh, may or may not happen today. Oof. Yeah, now you're looking at traffic and all kinds of unfortunate things. Yeah, and getting the podcast up, you know. That's true. Yeah, we are a little... Yeah, but I like this early Monday morning release, but, you know, that's just me, I guess. No, I think it's fine. I think it's good because it uh, gives us... Well, the only problem with it is we have to bring it right back, like, so quick. Yeah, I know. Um, So, maybe we could start doing it Sunday morning, early Sunday morning from church right after church or something yeah maybe for maybe you know what i'll just hop on up to the old pulpit and uh we can just record we can just record our c26 sermon on sunday morning yeah that would be good yeah i think we should roll with that and uh, we've had a lot of good ideas and i'm not sure that's one of them yeah that's a, that's a bad one so what's <laughs> what's uh you know we got four weeks out a lot of action going on mm-hmm uh mm-hmm. You had a busy week. I know you traveled a lot. We got Augusta and Chattanooga full this or in Chattanooga full this weekend. We got Louisville four we under four weeks under a month to go. Yeah, What's on your mind. Um, coming to that race line, start line, uh, jumping in the water, feeling as good as I felt all year. Um, I feel like uh, you know we talk about. You know how how far along can you make gains and things like that, and um, I am I'm kind of at the point now where I'm just I'm just trying to make sure that I don't overdo it and do yeah. something stupid, but but you know still inch it up. I mean I've got that kind of inch it up meter going right now. I mean if mm-hmm. I can push it just a little bit to not you know detract from the next day's workout or detract from the day whatever it may be i'm just trying to do you know like you know me and my long rides not a huge fan of the long rides uh just because i don't like them and it kind of gets me in a spot (laughs) (laughs) it gets me in a spot (laughs) uh so i i basically made a long ride out of two days this weekend which you know for me works you made a long ride out of out of two out of two days so did you another long ride yesterday yeah yeah i did uh I went uh, all in on hill repeats on Saturday. A yeah, I remember of, that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of climbing, you know, just hard climbing. Uh, I, for some reason, my body just responds to climb. I just like climbing a lot. But I, I went out and did a bunch of hill repeats, uh, like legitimate stuff. And then yesterday, I got to the lab and I, I went out there for two and a half with, uh, you know, focusing on uh, kind of race pace and just a little bit above extended. Uh, 20 minute sessions in arrow and things like that mm-hmm. so it was a it was a kind of a dual purpose sort of ah. uh, race simulation kind dual of thing purpose can i can i hammer the hills one day and come out the next day and hold my speed um, and yeah i mean you could nice yeah it was there the the 
I was a little concerned because I had been, hadn't been on the bike in a week. And, yeah. you know, I kind of mentioned that in the video the other night about how sometimes you feel like, man, I, I just probably just lost everything. You know, <laughs> yeah. if you, if you oh, take yeah. a week off. Prisoner, prisoner of the moment, I've lost it all. I can't even remember uh, how to ride. Exactly, yeah. Um, but was happy to happy to know it is just like riding a bike in some ways. <laughs> Turns out that's true. Yeah, I mean, those types of things are last uh, eternities forever, those sayings, because they're probably true. Um, so, yeah, I felt pretty good on that. I think I did... I, I was I did take a nap yesterday because I, I was felt great and then I, that last one was that's always the kicker to me. It's like should I go one more, one more round with this thing and uh, and the answer was halfway through I backed her down. Ah. So and then I just kind of cooled. Listen, it off. listen to the body. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I, I'm I'm pretty close to the same place you are. I have, uh, you know, traditionally, if, um, you know, and I, and I kind of alluded to this in a, in a post I put up yesterday on the in the closed group about, you know, dialing things in and limiting, lim- not just limiting stress, but limiting distractions that that may or may not cause, uh, you know, wasted energy or even honestly, even just wasted thoughts uh-huh. and in other directions that aren't suitable or productive or more importantly just positive and you know i've got you know you and i both have just under four weeks to go and you know traditionally you know i you know having this short of a span for of just you know basically 100 days of train for an iron man uh i would have i would have normally pushed it fairly close to probably a week to 10 days out to start my taper mm-hmm. um and honestly, if we weren't moving and weren't traveling this weekend, that would probably still hold true. But I think I've come to the decision that I'm probably gonna just this is my last week. Uh, mm-hmm. This is this is my last week to now. You know, my my that that first week, that third week won't feel. I might have it tagged as you know, quote unquote, dialing it back in or tapering, but it's not gonna feel like it really. Um, because I'll still hit some good quality sessions and some some probably longer stuff. But we get back on Sunday from West Virginia, and then Monday and Tuesday we move into our new house. So we got movers coming on Monday, and then getting settled in, like you know all. So it's going to be while exciting and fun, and, and you know all that kind of good stuff when it comes to moving into our first house. Um, plenty of stress, oh, yeah. you know, pl- plenty of time, you know, plenty of things to do, and. Show them something's bound to go wrong because nothing's going to go perfectly planned, and that's just how it is. And so, you know, I, I don't want to have expectations of needing to blow it out again next week. Um, and so, this is my last week. And so, I've decided to, you know, I'm going to have my own level of stress the following week. So, I don't really need to add to it because, you know, every, every, everything is going to be out of, I'm a huge creature of habit. Um, so is Hayden, so is my wife. And so like, we're going to be on like a totally different schedule living, you know, in a part of town we're not familiar with, you know, getting a a brand new house, you know, just trying to figure things out. So there's no need to add distress. There's no reason to make things more difficult when it comes to fitting things in. And so, um, I'm going to start dialing it back then and figure, you know, take my energy towards, you know, getting things settled in the house. And if I can get settled in there quicker, you know, next week, and let's say you know we we start moving in on Monday, and let's say by you know Friday, I've taken four or five easy days uh, of you know little the uh, little training, uh, short focus stuff. Then if I can get it done and have Saturday and Sunday to kind of like get back in a groove, then and have the those next two weeks, which are the most important weeks to recover and and relax and have no stress, then that's much better than trying to move in Monday, Tuesday, still trying to hit these big workouts and just compounding stress. Um, and then still not having things set up and still not having things kind of the way I want them in the house and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, pretty much getting ready to leave 10 days later for Louisville. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to di- dial it way back and, and limit stress and, and, 
you know, be as proactive as I can. So when I get to Louisville, you know, I've, I've had a great training run already. I'm going to stay focused this week and, and nail my workouts, but, um, you know, I'm healthy, no injuries. I've been as consistent as I've ever been. And, and, you know, if one more week's probably not going to be of a, of a huge gain. And so I would definitely rather go in, you know, a little bit fresher than, um, than not. Right. What, what's the first thing you got lined up for moving? Is it like the trainer just sitting right there first and you're it's like, movers, put this thing and set it up first? No, I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to ride longer this before you go out of town then longer run Saturday and day off Sunday. You know, Monday and Tuesday will just kind of be, you know, whatever I can get in, honestly. Probably more runs because I can just run from the house and that's probably going to be in then. Then I'll have the trainer set up easily by Wednesday you know, probably for the rest of the week. So, um, that won't be hard. I'll just have to kind of make do with what we got. Um, but that, you know, we're in the home stretch. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to stick to, you know, home stretch and limiting stress. And I, uh, you know, sorry to say to listeners, but I deleted myself off of Strava. I took myself out of the Facebook group in Ironman Louisville. Um, I am what I like to call, I'm trimming the fat. Yeah, that, I mean, I think that's a great point. I think you look at, I mean, even something as simple as Facebook, man, it can just, it can put the wrong shit in your head, you know? And uh, even like, if you don't think just, about, you know, just yeah. be quiet, people. I don't I mean, know. I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude, but it's like everybody whining and, and bitching and moaning about the Iron Man Louisville bib list. Like, you guys do understand that the Iron Man headquarters is in Tampa. Oh, and they just yeah. had a massive hurricane blow through. Uh-huh. What so they, they want? All got, Who's they all got about that? They from their homes. They all had to basically evacuate their company and work. And people are complaining about not having their the number that they're going to have on their bib. I mean, come on. Ah, <laughs> uh, c twenty six coach at gmail dot com for all complaints and uh, you know unhappy emails. Yeah, that's uh, that's I mean, but come, I mean, but come on. I, mean, I know, but even way, you know, I can, you know, people are excited. I get that. It's just I, I get it, but I mean, also, let's like let's look at the bigger picture here. Like, yeah, you don't know what your number is going to be a month out. Like, I know you're excited to make it your your Facebook profile picture. I get that. I know that's exciting. It was for me the first time, but let's think one step further and not complain that these people aren't doing their jobs when the reality is. And a lot of people may not know that their headquarters is in Tampa, but they just had a massive hurricane come through and displace their entire company. So they're probably a little bit behind. Let's cut them some slack. Right. Well, I think that's the point. I think we're all a little bit behind. Let's cut everybody some slack. Seriously. Can we just be kinder in this world in general? I'm, I'm all for it, but I, you know, I'm still waiting on it. I don't I, I think that's just a huge point, you know, to... I, we got to start remembering that, man, that we're all humans and we're in this together and let's just be kinder. And <laughs> I just think that I don't know what else to do. You know, everybody's, you know, we got all this stuff going on with the, you know, everything. Everybody's bitching about everything and complaining about everything. You know, and I just can't help but think, you know, like, you know, sometimes like it's like you say Facebook and, you know, sometimes like we're putting ourselves out there in a lot of ways, you know, and so every once in a while there's some little smarmy comment that shows up somewhere and, uh, kind of sets me in the wrong spot you know and i can't uh you know like going back way back to the early days of the you know the dog cast criticism and you know stuff like that and i am so far past that and over that because i know what we've done is you know it takes guts to put this stuff out there and it takes commitment and it takes a lot of energy and effort and uh and it's doing a lot of good for a lot of people i think including us and it's just a good positive thing and then um, when there's this negativity and bitching about everything on, under the sun, it's just kind of, in a general sense, that sort of stuff triggers me. And that's what I was getting at with the getting off of your, you know, getting out of the Facebook group for Louisville or whatever, getting off Strava. It's just, the uh, man, you, you try to do, you know, and I, I've heard people say this a lot, and you try to do you know, good things and, you know, eventually somebody's just got to step in there and try and ruin it. Um, and it really gets me, you know, it triggers me sometimes. So that's why I have to just stay away from it. 
And what do you what do you mean it triggers you? Well, when you it's like you could be going down a good path, and then you see some things that are just like annoying, and then it triggers me, or like it sort of seduces me into potentially thinking negative about stuff, and then I start, you know, just getting in that frame of mind or whatever, and then you want to kind of like. Uh, give the old uh, response and then you start you know what I mean like I'm not saying that I do that anymore but I it's so easy for me to want to just lash back you know or uh, that's uh, that's kind of the long term agenda that I've had about everything is just kind of being more positive frame of mind and not getting in that space and I just don't like it even when I kind of fall in, like one foot falls in that hole um so as far as energy goes it becomes wasted energy and then you start uh you know whatever it may be yeah i i I get that i mean that's that's was kind of the genesis of why i took myself off of uh i mean because you you fall into the trap man you start kind of well then i I just find myself like not trying to like explain or well that's kind of it rationalize other people's stupidity and I can't do it. Uh, and then I just waste energy. I'm like, why do I? I, yeah, I don't but the, care. What I'm saying is that bugs you. It does. It yeah. bu- stupid people bug me. It drives me insane. And then so do negative people and people who complain all the time. But um, And yeah, I get it. I'm complaining about complaining people. But I mean, I feel like it's just. But um, yeah, so I'm like, you know what? I, uh, um, you know, getting rid of it. I'm only going to be, I, I've, t- like I said, I, I got off Strava, even though I didn't follow anybody. I didn't, you know, I just, it's part of me trimming the fat. I didn't want to feel like I had to like answer questions or, or, uh, be honestly, it's like be hyper vigilant in trying to prevent some of these people and some of these groups from like totally destroying themselves. Um, and I was like, you know what, this is my like codependent coach hat. I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to, you know, if you want to do this, then go for it. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to do me and I'm going to make sure my athletes are well taken care of and I'm going to make sure that they hopefully try and tune out the other noise and uh, don't let other people's schedules and training, uh, epic training days get in their way. And because uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. No. And, uh, you know, I'm going to focus on the, the positive stuff and all the good and, uh, you know, do what I got to do. Yeah. To get ready and and I'm and I'm comfortable with that. Right, because you can't change people, you know. Um I mean, yeah, you can. They can change themselves, but you can't change people. Yeah. And it, and it's very hard to change yourself, let alone try and change somebody else. So that's where that's wasted energy all the way. Um So yeah, you just kind of got to move down the I mean, it's so I mean, everybody knows this has done an Ironman. It can be so consuming, right? I mean, that's the one thing that I have to balance more than anything. I've got a lot of things going on. You've got a lot of things going on. And then we've got Ironman sitting there waiting, which we all want to do great at. We all want to do our best. And it's just, I mean, in a, in, in a couple ways, it's like, it's a really good thing because it's like so exciting to, you know, have that lingering out there, you know, um, and because it's just waiting, you know, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah, it's not we've been putting anywhere. a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort into thinking about this race, training for this race. And, you know, I think that at the core, it is a, a major priority for everybody. And it's exciting because we want to get out there and just like show what we can do. And uh, and it can it can overwhelm you, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, and again, and I know that we talk about this all the time, but it, it, I think it bears merit to bring up again is that this, the, you can always tell how a person reacts or is approaching races by what they see on the other side, uh, and if of the race. Okay. And if it's like if you don't, if you can't see past it, or at least know there's going to be, like if you are not like for me. I'm super excited to race. I'm not stressed about it, literally, at all. I'm excited to race. I'm excited to see what I can do because I feel like this is as consistent as I've been, even though it's in like a short time time frame. And I'm just excited just to like to measure myself and then see what I can do next. You know, it's not like I've got to get to Louisville and 
if I don't do well, then that's it, or I'm ruined, or you know, like you. I think you have to be, you know, mindful of this. Isn't you're not well unless you're going to retire, and this is like a one and done thing for you. That's a whole other conversation. But if, if unless you're like planning on giving up or retiring. Then don't ever put don't put all your eggs in this one basket as a as a measuring stick of who you are as an athlete and how far you've come or how far you can actually go, because all of that pressure that you put on yourself is going to hurt your performance. It's not going to make it better. Like you're not going to thrive under pressure because you put more pressure on yourself. <laughs> like when you when you see people like you know quote unquote perform under pressure, it's because you see the situation as a pressure pack situation and they just see it as doing it. You know what I mean? Like they're just out there. Like it, it to them, it barely feels any different than what they're normally doing. And if you're going into, you know, Chattanooga this weekend, Augusta, or any race, whatever it is uh, all over the world, Louisville in four weeks, like if all you can see is the end like yes, yeah, should you be focused on it? Absolutely. But if you're, if the amount of pressure and the amount of weight you're putting on that race is so immense and so heavy that you're beginning to like feel yourself get bogged down and starting to doubt yourself, then that's when I think you need to take a few steps back and look at the bigger, broader picture. And it's not the end; it's just a check-in. Yes, is it important? Is a journey important, especially for people who have whose this is their first? I I get it. I've been there. Um, I and, but I think you see two different things. You see worry and anxiety, and then for other people, you see antsy and excited. And those are the two biggest differentiators in people who come in prepared and excited because they know they're coming in fresh. They know they've done all they can. And they're excited for the opportunity. Not, I'm anxious, I'm nervous, I hope I can do this. You know, to where they've talked themselves into... And I'm, I'm, a, I'm totally a huge believer in positive and negative energy and, and, it affects, and the effect it can have on your body physically. And people who kind of self-impose this like negative talk or negative self-doubt or... Um, because that's what it is when you when you look online more times what you're going to see instead of instead of instead of seeing one person who says be okay with your training you do you your training is different than anybody else's you're going to have 99 people who post their workouts and say this is exactly how you should do it this is how i'm preparing and then you know you know what's going to happen yeah you're you're never going to fulfill the expectation and even worse you're not going to be able to enjoy the day because you're going to be worried the entire time. You're either A, not going to make the cutoff, or B, not going to fulfill expectations. And that is the absolute worst way to race. And that is why I'm even more of a fan of, and I don't want to call it closing your inner circle, but that's kind of what I mean close your inner circle only surround yourself with positive people who their outlook on the race is listen the day is going to give you what it's going to give you you've literally done the best you could do up to this point now let's just see what happens and and, and having people that are positive and have that same mentality that are, that allow you to race free is is the greatest way in the best gift that they can give you to where you can reach your full potential and race your best instead of feeling like you're kind of chained down to other people's negative energy or self-doubt and stuff like that so yeah i mean i guess it is it's it's closing your inner circle and only coming into contact with the people that you think are going to bring you positive vibes and good energy versus unwanted worry stress and pressure that nobody else needs Mm mm-hmm yeah, it's kind of um, when you get to, it's like when people keep wanting you to you know or it's that whole word. It's kind of weird because we use this uh, crushing iron and and the word crush. Go out and crush it. You know, if you keep hearing that, that that kind of like I think in a way puts a little 
pressure on yourself but if you're if you're going go have fun you know go enjoy it let the race come to you those kind of things just subconsciously take pressure off people too um if you have that sort of mindset going in i remember the first time i think i may have talked about this before but it's it's a pretty good point that i think is worthy of thinking about my first iron man it was you know i was in the you know the previous mode that you were just talking about that like a lot of pressure and i just was like you know had all these expectations in my head and having time i couldn't think about anything else i just i can i get it done i you know all these things were in my head and uh i remember going to bed that night and not sleeping very well and for whatever reason when i got up grabbed my you know water bottles and walked up to transition i felt this extreme calm come over myself um and it was sort of something that I remember happening, you know, when he, when I would play sports back in college or whatever. But that right, you know, the pregame jitters and all that stuff just kind of washed away the minute you walked on the field. And, you know, it's sort of the minute you get in the water, you got to, you know, you just that that tension, everything just goes away because you're basically walking the plank. You got, you know, you can't turn back. So it's like you surrender to that moment. Mm-hmm. And that's so powerful. I mean, I remember that feeling vividly. It was like, all right, well, now let's just go out and, hey, man, this is cool. I'm in an Ironman. I'm doing a race. I'm doing an Ironman. Exactly. And it's like, wow. That's when I remember that. Just I do remember enjoying that first, you know, thousand yards of that swim. It was just sort of like, wow, I'm actually doing it now. And it, then I kind of remember a little smile coming over my face. And it was like, so that's the the... The feeling. You should always smile. Yeah. In the in the in the swim, my best races I've smiled, or the ones that I've had the most fun in, which I would consider being my best, mm-hmm. I smiled during the swim. Because I was like, man, like all it took to get here, and I made it. You know, and it's like, and that's the thing. Like the toughest part isn't the race. The toughest part is like the 100 days the six months the 12 months that lead up to race day navigating life listen navigating life in general for a year (laughs) is is hard enough i mean let's be honest like navigating life for a year with its ups and downs and and you know you have literally have no idea and no control that's the thing and i think that's what it comes down to a lot too is is us realizing that we just don't have any control like yeah i know we think we do but we don't like zero zilch like i remember thinking about that i think we actually talked about that on eclipse day like (laughs) if that couldn't be any more of a oh look how small i am in this gigantic universe (laughs) that i literally have no control of these major things that happen influence sure you know will sure but you know the stress that life can you know put on you um you know, like somebody was asking me like yeah like you know sounds like a great time you know to move in a new <laughs> move in a new house and i'm like listen like yeah we i you know we moved from kansas city to here in may we, you know i started we started this full time decided not to go a different job route and now we're moving into a brand new house all within the 100 basically the 100 days we've been doing this is that ideal no but i've navigated it and that's the hardest part is like navigating the 24 hours a day that you're given each day to fit in the workouts to fit in the time to take you know to take to make things priorities to to make these certain sacrifices or, or make things more important once you get to race day, like, dude, I, I, I can totally manage this for a day. I've been managing these, pre- like, for you and I, I've been managing these, these previous 99 days already. What's, I mean, and, and this is like, this is it. I don't even have to worry about managing tomorrow. I just got to worry about going and finding that, you know, Louisiana Cajun buffet breakfast the next morning and crushing it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, be, be happy, enjoy it. Like, you've, you've made it. You've made it. And literally making it to the starting line at a race like a 70.3 or a full Ironman, just making it to the start line, if you look back at the athlete list or the participant list or whatever it is, you've already beaten 300 to 400 people because they didn't even show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
they got hurt, they got injured, they got intimidated, or they, you know, they weren't able to navigate life and they just gave up. But you made it. You checked in, you got in your hotel, you packed your bags, you came to this city, and now it's ready to go. So you made it. Now you just got to get out there and, and, and have fun. You know, it's like, and I think that's just, I know we talk about it all the time and it's like being endorsed, but like if you can't have fun with this thing called triathlon and like the process that it takes you through and the things you learn about yourself, like racing is the fun part. It shouldn't be like the stressful part should be training if you're going to have stress, but the race, dude, it should be so much fun. Um, you know, because you're you're surrounded by so many positive people, you're usually surrounded by good energy. But you see these like pale white faces, um, the days before, and like the negative energy, or just a, maybe it's not negative energy, maybe it's just anxious energy. And but it's like, like um, I, I honestly I can't wait. I mean, I'm gonna have so much fun. I have literally no idea how my race is gonna go. Um, I won't know until you know probably six miles left in the run but i'm just excited you know like to uh, to be going to to be hanging out with such awesome people to and just to be able to race is awesome enough in its in its own right no doubt i, I the thing about race day is like you know people thought you yeah, there's this thing about living in the moment right and i can't think of a a place where I live in the moment more than on race day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. uh, 12 hours of literally being in the moment because you can't really, you know, you're, it's, uh, your mind can't really wander that far. Yeah. And it, I think in some ways the fact that, you know, combined with the fact that, you know, you've trained for so long and then once you cross the finish line, you know, sort of that relief is, uh, you know, it's kind of you feels like you've completed that cycle. Um, I think that's a huge part of it, but just the fact that you're out there every day, and if you kind of take that mentality into the race, knowing that you're going to be out there and you're not going to be distracted by stupid little things out there other than, you know, maybe a pain in your foot or your knee or whatever, Mm -hmm. those kind of little things that you can manage, but the big picture, it's just like a huge stress relief in a lot of ways. It's kind of wild. You just go through that day. And and I was telling somebody before the Wisconsin swim, I think, you know, as you get in there, you're going to have contact. There's going to be some weird moments in the swim. But if you mentally get in a spot right now where if you get kind of crushed over or run over or, you know, collide with somebody in the water and you mentally make sure that you're going to smile and kind of laugh about it from this, this point right here, that swim's going to be a lot more enjoyable. It'll set the tone, you know, to get going and not... You know, just to let go of that stress the minute you're jumping in that water. And it's a, it, you're right, man. It's like, who knows what's going to happen? But just if you can kind of like, you know, it, it's a long day. It's a long, I think about this in training a lot, just hitting those strides, you know, those places where, you know, it feels good. You're moving your body. You're not overdoing it. And you can find those, if you just look for those places and just kind of like we're saying, you know, get, have a smile on your face and, and just enjoy that and think you got to be in the moment, man. You can't start thinking about stuff way ahead. You just got to kind of go with what your body's giving you and enjoy the day and look around. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, some, some of the best advice, that's a great point. Some of the best advice I can give anyone who is going into a race like that is, is, is prepare yourself to accept not being able to race in your own bubble Mm. other people are going to have an effect not an effect other people are going to come into contact with you and over the course of nine hours or 17 hours you're going to have opportunities that are going to be given to you by other racers by spectators by volunteers by you know local individuals who live there to give you a choice to say i'm going to get irritated i'm going to be negative you got in my way you're deterring me why isn't this water ready where's my gatorade you're blocking me get over to the right you know why are you creeping up me so far like 
you can either let that affect you or just remain positive and, 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 and accepting of that because that's going that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely 100% going to happen. And I think a lot of people go into these races thinking they're going to be able to race like in their own bubble. Like I'm time trial starts, so nobody's going to con- come into contact with me. I'll be okay. You know, I got a wetsuit stripper and everything's going to go according to plan. I'm going to bike and, you know, there's tons of other cyclists and everybody's going to give me my space and I'm going to run. And every aid station I hit, somebody's going to be holding an umbrella with sunscreen and Vaseline and Gatorade and water and Coke. Like, and here, what do you want? What do you want, Mike? Would you like three pretzels or five pretzels? Like, that's not how it's going to go. And you have to prepare your mind for that to basically say, no matter what happens today, I'm going to smile and keep moving. You know, and that that was something that um, that I that I heard from Ross when he was giving me his breakdown at Wisconsin was that, um, and, and, and I don't want to go too far off into this area, but every single person I talked to at Wisconsin said they had an uninspired flat swim, mm. um, which I I contribute totally to. Not being, not everybody being able to get in the water for a proper warm up. Anyway, um, <laughs> Can't, let's go down that road. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. It's stupid and it's ridiculous um, to let people not warm up. I mean, anyway. So, but he said I went through the first twenty miles of the bike and I was, you know, I had an uninspired, as he called it, flat swim. And then the first three miles of, of my bike, my I could feel my tire rubbing, you know, and soft. And I was just getting super irritated and super irritated because here you are thinking, all right, this is supposed to be the best day ever and nothing's going to go wrong and everything's going to go according to plan. Well, guess what? It's just like life. It's just like any other day of the week. Stuff's going to happen. It's how you respond that determines the outcome. Mm-hmm. And he got off his bike, made the adjustment. And he said, instantly, I chose to have a better attitude. And I became grateful, and I became happy and appreciative, and that changed the way, that changed the course of my entire race, he said. And you saw him, you were there, and it was on video, like the last six miles, I've never seen somebody smiling so much on the run. Yeah. And yeah. But you know what that was? That that's That's perspective. And imagine being able to race with that mindset free and happy and appreciative versus one that's pressure filled kind of like you're caged like you're so t- we talked about this before like racing tense like you know something's going to happen something's going to happen I just know something's going to happen or this is I'm like no it's not like you know, like it may but stuff's going to happen it's how you respond to it that determines the outcome not what happens to you yeah, that's what we um, what we call that one time. Wait for the shoe to drop or the other mm-hmm. shoe to drop. You know, it's like yeah. um, I know that those kind of situations a lot of times are the ones that kind of may frustrate you or upset you during the race. Now, I have used those in that way where you know because sometimes you know fuel is fuel and sometimes anger can be a fuel, right? So when you channel that anger in a positive way that's Mm -hmm. to me is a really important thing to do it's like all right it's kind of like the old okay you're gonna do that i'll show you whatever so i kind of use that kind of thing too in in a way to give it it just sort of picks you up it gives you that energy it's sort of like it wakes you know you talk about being flat or whatever but if something like that happens i'm sure ross when he's his brake was rubbing it was probably starting to really piss him off at some point Oh, for sure. And it then he kind of me off. Yeah, you know, I've been there. So it does. It gets you really angry. But if you can take that, so- solve that problem, look at it in the eye, and, and deal with it, and then get by it, and then that pent up uh, anger or whatever that was starting to build, that just creates a little more energy. You know, you always talk about it. Anger is energy uh, disguised as fear. I don't know what the what that, that saying is, but. Um, emotions are energy, so it's all about channeling emotions. I think on race day, you know, whether it it uh, they be happy or sad or, or angry or whatever it may be, if you can kind of use that as your fuel, but just put point it in the right direction, then you know it it starts evening out and 
and can be a positive. I guess that's what I'm saying is that like all that stuff can be a positive if you if you play your card right. You know. Yeah, I mean it's there's opportunity you know, in everything in every exactly whatever the saying yeah. goes. No man, so, well, there's a million sayings like that, but yeah, I mean it's it's Let's there's on all the we. What'd you say? Let's go down the list of those things. No, I can't remember, but yeah, you know what I mean. It's like no, there's I mean, opportunity it, in every. There is, and you know, it's you know, it's the crux of of the book that I gave you that you haven't ever read. But um, <laughs> the obstacle is the way. Yeah, the entire yeah. the entire book, you know, about stoicism. It's like whatever you know, you have this this pretty picture of what life and what this is supposed to look like, and then you wake up, and life happens. And it's how you respond to it, and you look at it, and you say, "Okay, it, this this happened, this happened, this happened. That's not going to deter me. It just becomes the way." And so the way you need to think about it is, is like everything that happens just be, just becomes part of your story at the end of the race, and you still have the chance to write it. You know, it, it, it's it's basically like sitting down and you're going to write a book, and then every every chapter to somebody, and so you you start out writing a book, just like you start out writing a race, and you have this outcome that you want at the very 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 end, but everything in the middle is kind of up for grabs. Um, but you have the way you want it to be written out, just like you have the way you want to pace it and have how you want to execute it during a race. And let's say every like two to three chapters of writing this, somebody somebody has the opportunity to drop in and totally like insert a different character or a different scene. Is that going to make you change the ending, or are you just going to kind of get creative and work your way around it to a to the same ending but a different route? And that's what racing is. You're going to be dealt difficult circumstances you know and it's how you deal with them that's going to make it a great quote unquote great race or not a great race um and it's all it all and it all starts with what what's what, what the mindset that you have when you wake up on race day and the days before like people are going to ask you a million questions like a million questions we're going to get there thursday um and you're going to run into all kinds of people and you know, so you know, what's been your longest ride? What's been your longest run? Yeah, well, mine was this. Or what are you using? It's like, it's all this exchanging of information, which is really just nervous chit chat based on self reassurance. And um, you just kind of, kind of like, yeah, whatever. Like, if you're talking to me about the race, and we, and I run into you in Louisville, I promise I'm not trying to be a dick if I just give you short answers. Um, if you want to talk about the podcast or training, you know, like yourself or coaching, like, yeah, we can chit chat for hours or you want to talk about, you know, football, whatever it is. Yeah, we can talk for, for days. But if you want to talk about like my race prep or how I'm going to execute, you know, I'm probably going to be short just because, uh, you know, a, that's kind of how I am in general when it comes to stuff like that. Um, but you know, I just, I just want to have fun. I truly do. I just want to have fun. And, you know, girls want to have fun, man. It's like that, you know, guys want to have fun too. Uh-huh. And, you know, when we race. And that's and that's what I want it to be about. I want it to be fun. I want it to be a great experience. And I want to – I want to leave um, – you know, I want to leave the – I want to leave it all out there. And when I cross the finish line, think to myself – man that was fun and I'm proud of what I did and if I can say those two things then whatever the time reads it's a win you know because that because the you know where I rank or where it ranks on the list of like the athletes page like that's just for people to look up or athletes like for me it'll be a success if I can execute it as close to as I can as I want to, which I'm not even sure exactly what that is yet. Um, and, but have fun and, you know, maybe I'll walk into the race choosing to try to execute the perfect race and execute it, po- you know, perfectly from start to finish and be a little conservative and then see what happens on the run. Or maybe I'll just say, Hey, you know what? Things have been feeling great. I've been consistent. My training has gone well. Let's see what I got today. Mm-hmm. You know, and if the wheels come off, the wheels come off. But you know, because you you have those two different types of races or racers, 
And that's the other part about fear and pressure is that I don't honestly think you can ever truly find your maximum potential unless you're unless you put it all out in the line in a way that you just might fail. Yeah. And I'm, that's super nerve wracking. And, and while I don't necessarily advise that for a person doing it their first time, second time, or third time, or maybe the first or second time, uh, but once you've raced long, you know, long distance enough, you kind of know. But you know, it's like it's that fighting in your head. Like, do you like? I think I had an athlete ask me one time, "Do you feel increased pressure to perform well um, because you're a coach?" And I said, no, because if I did, then I would be a hypocrite um, because I don't I, I don't incorporate my re, my results or winning a podium to what I would call being successful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think I know a lot of athletes. I was joking with this about another athlete earlier this week, but or last week that when you look at coach bios, they always have like their results page of you know what they've done and when they did and what their times were and yeah I th- well I think that's good for marketing and it really says nothing about how good of a coach you are um, you know but for me it's about being healthy being happy being a good father being a good husband and if I can do all those things leading up to that race then I've earned the right to race free and if I choose to lay it out on the line like let's say I go into Louisville and I think you know what I've get to, I've gotten to this race, you know. I mean, like, I'll, I'll, let me be honest, man. Like, moving into a house with Allie and Hayden will be one of the greatest days of my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, four years ago, I was an alcoholic drunk with a car that had been repossessed, getting evicted from their apartment no money to my name I walked out of treatment with no car no job to go live in a halfway house where I had to borrow money to go live with 16 other guys and take the bus and to wake up you know in a house of our own that we've built and done the things we want to and come as far as we have with nothing hanging over our shoulders anymore I've never had that and to be able to white to wake up in Louisville with that race and be able to race mentally and emotionally free like i can't think of a better way and if i choose to and and that's and everybody goes through things in their life like you know the lady that you know had uh that awesome facebook post which i want to i want to definitely end on a few of those things that have transpired in our crushing our closed group the past week but who posted about you know her her quote unquote dnf at wisconsin when she was helping that person she signed up for wisconsin when she was in a really dark place Mm -hmm. and i and we talk about this all the time i fully i fully believe that over half the people that sign up for an iron man are in that dark place sure yeah i I mean if, if not more um, and some are darker than others, some are lighter than others, but but if you make it, if you make it, then you deserve the opportunity to race free. And you deserve the opportunity to do whatever you want to and race however you want to. And if you want to wake up and you want to play a conservative just to finish, because it's because getting that medal is going to be like the life-changing part of it, then you you go get it and you race like hell and you get that medal. If you want to go out there and you want to execute perfectly and try to pin down the perfect race, then have at it. If you want to wake up and you want to test the limits of your abilities and see how long you can hold on and see what just might happen and it'd be okay if the wheels just totally fall off and you have to walk the last half marathon, I guarantee you, you're going to walk that last half with a smile on your face because mm-hmm. you just let it all hang out. And I think that's the fun part of racing. Just letting it all, you know who I love who races like that? Who? Starkey. Yeah, he does. He has no regrets ever. He just races 
as best and as hard as he can until the wheels fall off. And sometimes they fall off, you know, early. Sometimes they don't fall off at all and he wins. But he just, and he has fun doing it, he doesn't care. You know, and, and he, you know, and I think that's, that's, that's the freedom and that's the opportunity that racing gives us is it gives us the choice to execute, to finish, to compete, to just complete or to transcend what we ever thought possible and be okay with it and laying it on the line knowing that, you know what, I tried, it didn't work out today, but you know what, I learned a lot and I'm going to recover and guess what, I'm going to get back at it tomorrow. And, and that's, that's, that is why racing is so much fun. Yeah. Do you want to um, tell that little story that she posted in the group about? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had our in our closed. If you're again, if you're searching for our group, you just need to search on Facebook "Crushing Iron Group." It's not the actual crushing Crushing Iron page. Um, and I think it was maybe Monday or Tuesday of earlier this week. We had a we had a lady in the forum who posted a really really long. Um, detailed kind of wa- walk through of, of her experience at Ironman Wisconsin, and and she kind of started it out with like you know hey I've I have uh, you know it's hard to put into words her feelings she didn't quote unquote finish you know she set out a goal earlier in the year when she was in an emotionally dark place um, as it's been kind of an anchor for her entire year given her hope and something to put her energy towards which dude been there one hundred percent always been there yep um and you know she she witnessed a really really bad horrific bike crash and instead of choosing to finish her race that she's been training for and anchoring her down for the whole year she decided to help uh she's a nurse she knew she this person was in pretty bad shape um you know and she spent her time on the road helping someone and then got back on her bike and finished, which I don't even think a lot of people would have done. I mean, witnessing traumatic events like that, and it sounds like this was, um, you know, a lot of people would have just called it a day because that alone takes up <laughs> so much stress and energy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, but she got back on her bike, finished, and then she finished the first 13 mile loop of the run. Um, but due to the time spent that she had been with this girl, um, she was unable to make the cutoff, um, and it, I mean, it got obviously for I mean, it, for every reason imaginable, she got so much love on her Facebook page. Like, talk about well deserved. Um, in you know, a just in store restoring my faith in humanity, which I feel like needs being restored every day. Um, but like how awesome of a story and then i think like a few days later like mike riley called her on the phone and 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 told her she was an iron man like how cool of a story is that yeah um i mean just like i think it's uh, so she says as an update tuesday morning my phone rang and i about died when i answered because it was mike riley he gave me my very own you know her name i'm not sure if she wants her to, to talk about it or not so i'm not gonna use her name but you are an iron man um, I mean, how, like, when you talk about experiences and you talk about life and you talk about keeping things in perspective, like, example 1A through Z. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And the, so the responses she's gotten from, basically, I mean, everybody on the forum, I mean, people were crying, I think. People were reaching out to Iron Man on her behalf, trying to get her you know, an entry into the next race. I'm, uh, I know she's going to race in a full next year. I'm not going to kind of disclose that, but, um, I'm going to do her training plan for free. And I know I'm not going to name his name either. Cause uh, I think he likes the anonymity, but one of our C26 athletes reached out to me and asked if I would reach out to her and see if she would be willing to accept his Ironman Wisconsin finisher medal. Oh, wow. And uh, obviously, she said yes, and so she, you know, he he just finishes this this Ironman. I think it's just his second, and two days later, is shipping it off to somebody else. Wow, yeah, that's cool, man. That's... And again, and again, that's 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 where perspective meets perspective. 
you know, like to him, it was the journey and it was the race and he know what he did and he wants to move forward. It's not the medal. And, but knowing and giving that gesture to somebody who didn't have the opportunity to cross the finish line because she had the same perspective in just a different way. Like that's what it's all about. Like that, those, like those gestures and these stories are what give me like unbelievable hope in um, where the sport is headed, where the people who who participate in the sport are headed and honestly, if I could live my life within the crushing iron closed group, I'd be pretty solid. <laughs> exactly. Because it is, it's always so positive with literally with thanks, 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 gratitude, 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 gratitude. Or when somebody has a question, like no snarky, smart ass responses. Um, like, oh, yeah, been there, done that. How about this? Mm-hmm. Like willing to help willing to give advice you know you can never ask you know, it's just it's a place where so many good things that happen that you know i'm super grateful to be just a small part of it but to, so to hear stories like hers um yeah she had a, and she also mentioned in there about how i mean let's be real you know we talk about uh, all the training being like all the schooling and then that day is the you walk across the stage and get your diploma for all the work you put in and you know the diploma being the medal but a big part of that too i think for a lot of people and rightly so is you know, to hear mike riley you know scream that you are an iron man and a lot of people want that and that's part of the diploma so to speak and to hear the fact that he called her <laughs> after that to me is just like that helps awesome. i mean it's just the coolest thing and well, i it totally is reach out to you know i can't i mean and those are the things that uh you know, who knows what he's done over the years. And you watch him like I did with Ross late in that night. And, you know, he, I'm sure, can you imagine that, you know, we, we talk about some of these Facebook groups or whatever and the stuff that goes on or whatever. Can you imagine the stuff he's dealt with, you know, throughout the years oh, with the, the attitudes and no everything like telling. that? And for him to keep the right side of the fence, it seems like most of the time, as far as just, you know, keeping it in perspective, because that's one thing I've been, always noticed about what what he does but just uh for him to um hear that and you know go through the channels and give her a call and and say i don't know i mean that's just like like i was saying that what she did will come back tenfold in positive karma and it, it sounds like it already is moving that direction and i'm just it's just a great story i mean it's a humanitarian piece that uh just is so much bigger than any kind of race or any kind of anything oh so. for sure it's, it's just little things like that like i think that's Allie's favorite iron man moment ever was <laughs> when was when i was when i finished wisconsin and i stopped and kissed kissed her and hayden on the on the forehead and then he like noticed something and asked about baby and he was like yeah well you're an iron man like to her and i was like that's like one of her favorite probably her favorite like uh, moment ever but it's like those small little things that like but that's that's just like the prime example is there's all these opportunities to make these like small what may or may not seem like insignificant gestures Mm -hmm. that make all the difference in the world and you know thanking people like i literally every time i like if if i'm doing a race every single time i cross a intersection where there's a cop i thank them Mm -hmm. or wait um and if you don't, you should, because they are what they are what allow us to like you know go out and do this and keep these courses safe and keep you know cars from on it. All this, it's like, and I think just racing with that mentality in general, again, and we we talk about this all the time. It's like it anytime you can race and take it out of yourself, you have a better opportunity to succeed. And so when you're grateful and thankful and you're showing gratitude, like taking the focus away from you 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 honestly just allows you the opportunity to fulfill your potential and race free because you don't have this pressure and you're not swallowing yourself whole under this avalanche of stress and anxiety and pressure that you see a lot of people race with i think that's a good one man i think that's a good way to end it man an hour in woof yeah Considering I wasn't sure if we were going to make five minutes today. 
That's how it always goes, man. That's yeah. how it always goes. That's the, I guess that lesson applies to uh, podcasting as well. Take the pressure out of podcasting. Yeah, or, you know, it's like if you don't want to go run, you know, just put your shoes on. If you don't want to podcast, just put on the headphones. Yeah, exactly. That's it, right? See, see what happens. Um, yeah, there we go. If you, and again, join our, uh, if you're this far in, that means you must be uh, a little bit interested. So yeah. uh, let's join. We just started starting from the last and going to the first. So yeah. welcome. Welcome to the 94th <laughs> Crushing Iron Podcast. Join our closed group on Facebook. You search Crushing Iron Group. We have two pages, the Crushing Iron Group. You'll send and we'll let you in there. You send a request, we'll let you in. And that's where a lot of, you know, this podcast basically happens in there. You know, the positive energy and the re- positive reinforcement and support and good conversation all happens inside there. Mm-hmm. And uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I I have had quite a few inquiries about off, you know, quote unquote off season training. I would rather call it Q four focus um, to basically prepare for twenty eighteen. If you have any interest, I, I have a um, a really solid, um, very well laid out kind of sixteen uh, week plan to get you prepped and ready to execute january 1 not get back in shape january 1 uh so if you're kind of struggling to do with motivation or to find a way or need a plan or are wondering uh you know you're in that what to do next phase and you know oh just take a break and we all know what happens listen if you take a semester off of school the likelihood of coming back the next semester zero uh, you may come back never at all. You may come back a year later, but taking a semester off, uh, you know, is usually kind of tough. Take some structure, uh, you know, definitely on the lighter end, but have a focus. Be prepared. Focus on what's important. Hang out with your family. Stay in line and get ready to uh, have your best season yet in 2018. Yep. And stop by crushingiron.com. And we've got all of our stuff on there. You can check out what we're up to. and. Mm-hmm coaching plans and we have a pricing list and different options and things like that so it's all sitting there hundreds and hundreds of blog posts if you want to dig around in there some inspirational videos from uh, Ironman races Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff Uh, oldies and some goodies yeah Should should we keep going should we just make this no nah I'm pretty pretty tapped all right sounds good man <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff to answer a lot more questions I had for you but we'll I have know. to wait till the next one I know well uh hey next next uh podcast will be the last recorded podcast from the office here in Green Hills the next one will be from the new uh C26 uh lake office ooh um yeah Hey, yep. speaking of, is the lake still open? Yeah, it's open until October, man. Okay. I mean, especially right. since I'm moving, I'm going to be out there at least once or twice a week before Louisville just getting a little nice nice little swim. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I can't wait to do that. i got to get out there. All right. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go, huh? <laughs> All right. Thanks for checking in. Crush your iron. Time. Checking out. All right. See All right, you, dude. buddy. See you, man.